58th and Broadway. I was in the hood in LA in the 80s and everything. I saw it. And I saw a lot of people doing the election saying, hey, look, Joe Biden, he had to do mass incarceration because things are bad. I want people to, I'm going to give these people the context. Yes, we had gangs in LA, but the gangs were a response to the condition that the people of LA were under because the main gang, the LAPD, was fucking with everybody. So you had to form these gangs all around town throughout the 60s and the 70s that protected black people from the police. We had it ended up becoming exactly. some bullshit when they pumped in these outside drugs from Reagan and from Nixon. And I, y'all can look it up right now. For every dollar that they took from education and mental health facilities, they built prisons. Everything. So they literally built an environment for the gangs to flourish. Basically, what happened was the United States scratched us and sold us the Band-Aid. But the Band-Aid they sold was prison. Versus when you go back to the 1930s, I tell people all, all the time this. The United States knew what to do to fix our issue. They knew, like what Free said, reparations was an issue. You need to put money in people's pockets. Opportunity stops all the bullshit. When white immigrants was killing each other with Tommy guns back in the 20s, go back right. and watch all them Bugsy Siegel movies, all those gangster movies. They're glorifying some heinous shit. And things were so bad, what they did was they had to have President Roosevelt create something called the New Deal. And the New Deal was basically reparations and affirmative action for white people. They said, in order to stop these white people from killing each other, let's give them jobs, let's get them an eight-hour work week, let's get them health insurance, Social Security, and all the shit that we take for granted came because white people were killing each other in the streets. That was a solution. When black people were killing each other in the streets, they said, let's throw these niggas in jail. Well, let me tell you, and I got to give a shout out to my homie, big shout out to my homie, Dennis Hayward. He, If you get a chance, look up Pasadena Black Pages. That's his, his thing. He started Pasadena Black Pages. Dennis Hayward, I grew up with this brother, and I thank Dennis Hayward. And I was talking to him the other day, and I, wrote, I was telling him, look, bro, Dennis Hayward, in like 1986, Dennis, Dennis got cracked. He was the first person that I knew that got cracked for dope, for the dope. You're the very first person. Um, when he got cracked, I think they said some shit like they was going to get his dude 85 years. 85 Damn. years. 80 for what? For, in what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. for what for crack cocaine for crack cocaine hold on because he got cracked and they said 85 years that was that was everybody that heard we was like 85 years because that happened to him i personally took i threw them fucking rocks out my hand like nigga take this shit i don't want to have nothing to die selling no dope you kiss my ass homie I'm going to go get a job at the cable company. I don't care what it takes. I'm not doing no motherfucking 85. Because he got cracked, it let me know how real it was. Now, back to what I'm saying. When I talked to him, he was like, freeze, man. Because I was mentioning this. I was like, you know, I don't know who the fuck, who I want to vote for. This orange racist bastard or this fucking, this fucking dumb, nimble Biden is a goofball to me, man. And Camilla, I don't really like this bitch because you didn't lock motherfuckers up for shooting that nigga up in motherfucking Sacramento. Fuck you forever for that bitch. They killed that boy. And they still ain't talked about that. Devontae, they still have not talked about that. He got Richardson, shot in the back of his grandmother's house. Devontae going in Park. his own house. And nobody's been charged to this day. They still don't talk about that. So I, I feel real bad about that. I don't know. How can I vote for you when you're doing that kind of shit? But then again, how can I vote for this fucking orange fucking idiot? So <laughs> I was telling him, you know, look, man, Biden, these motherfuckers, they doing the crime bill and all that. He said, wait right there. So I want you to know something. These motherfuckers had a plan from 1984. I graduated high school, Pasadena High School, 1984. Okay? Gang banging was... Dying down. 
gang banging when I came up, when I was in involved in gang banging, it was about this. It really was about chunking them. Or you could locking. not run and go get no gun. What? You <laughs> pussy ass nigga. A gun, you got to get in here and chunk them. That's what it was about. And I'll tell you something else about that era. If you were gang banging after high school, you were a lame. You gang banging out of high you out of you you finished with high school. What you talking about gang banging? This nigga's gang banging. You getting clown, nigga. You better be trying to get you a Z. <laughs> you know I was all about that shit corny. Like we was laughing at you if you was gang banging out of high school. So this is 1984. That was the temperature. Gangs were subsiding. Dope hadn't hit yet. The shit was uh, you know, and the gangs that were there was all about basically just fighting. Nobody was pulling out that heat yet. But then came 1984. 1984, 85, 86, 87 was the year. 1987, my homie told me he saw the yard go from three, 300 people. And then, you know, from like 1986 and 80, 87, about 300 people on the yard. He said in 87, that number rose to 1,500. And just kept growing. And exactly, man. And kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. And he told me when he was locked up in 86, the motherfuckers was building jails already. They were already setting that whole that crime bill. This we talk about 86, 1986. In 85, 86, they let them, they gave you the dope and they told you to sell it. Ronald Reagan gave black people dope and told them to sell it. And then Big Papa took his, his chunk right off the top, like dope dealers, like kingpins do. He took his off the top. And what he do, like kingpins do, he went and got that heat and sold it to the motherfucking Contras. Guns and dope. Guns and dope, guns and dope, guns and dope. That's this country. That's what this country is, baby. Then they let niggas rock. 86, 87, or, or excuse me, 84, 85, 86. And in 87, the gates closed. We locking all you niggas up. That's when they came up with the three strike rule. That's when all of that shit. That's when mass incarceration was starting to be in effect. Now, now you got motherfuckers taking real, real, real penitentiary chances. Okay? So when Cats is looking at numbers like 85 years, okay, guess what? That's when that heat comes out. That's when niggas start killing each other. That's when it starts getting dangerous. Because, God damn it, I cannot have nobody telling on me. I'll kill that nigga first. Or I can't let nobody... Take this dope from me. I'll kill that motherfucker first. That's when the guns and shit started coming into play. In 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, the guns was in full effect. That's when the little homies looked at me and was like, hey, big homie, all that chunking? Ain't nobody chunking shit. It's straight dumping, big homie. You better get out the way. And I did get out the goddamn way. I went and <laughs> motherfuckers got me a job at the cable company, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, it was it was it was no joke, man. They was locking cats up left and right, left and right. All motherfucking Bill Clinton did was keep it going. He didn't come up with that. It was George I, Bush Sr. And I want to go up him, Nixon, and Ford. Ford, yep. Ford, Nixon passed it on to Ford. Ford passed it on to to, to uh, GW uh, George Bush Senior. And then those motherfuckers had everything into effect. Reagan's goofy ass, who was nothing but a motherfucking, uh, he's an actor. I could have been Reagan, nigga. He's an actor. They was uh, they was running the country when his ass was president. Now when when Reagan was president, I was in the military at that time and it was sweet baby I was getting paid the dollar was lovely I was in Europe I was in Berlin and for every one American dollar you were getting three three dollars and 45 cents of German money 
Your money was tripling and then some. We talking about 85, 86. 85, 86, well, yeah. While that American dollar was doing that, these motherfuckers was motherfucking infiltrating and poisoning our hood with money, guns, and crack cocaine. And that's when they came up, 86, 87, 88. That's when they, that's when if you were black and you had 50 grams or less of crack, your ass was getting stretched the fuck out. But if you had 50 grams of soft, you were getting five years. And who wrote that? Huh? And who put that law in the place? Joe Biden. That was, wasn't that Bill Clinton? Well, no. Was it Bill that did Be, that? This is, that was before Clinton. Joe, that was a Strom Thurmond law, the crack disparity law, the rock, those, those laws, those were put together by Strom Thurmond, but championed by Joe Biden. Joe Biden and right. drug laws go back to the beginning. I want to add a, l- a little bit to what you said. On top of what Free said, you can go back to 1971 when Nixon started the war on drugs. And if you go back, and I talked about this on Craig Facts last week, I always get the names confused because I'm dyslexic like a motherfucker. But it's Lee Atwater. I always get Lee Atwater and Barry Goldwater mixed up because I'm a dyslexic left-handed nigga. And when I hear water, I just throw all the goddamn names off. But it's Lee Atwater. And he talks about he was recorded in the 80s and said, look, we would call this the war on black people, but we can't call it the war on black people. So we had to give it a name and call it the war on drugs. And you... One thing you saw, so on one hand, you literally have the United States government using its resources to go to war on a group of taxpaying citizens. That's one. Right. Two, two, when we look at the money from from 1971 all the way through the rest of the century, for every dollar taken from mental health, for every dollar taken from schools, they put into prisons. So they started this in 19... They knew back then that, okay, we we got we got some up our sleeve for these niggas. They think they just want some civil rights. We about to fuck it up from them royalty. So we're going to... So we're going to stop educating them and then we're going to build prisons. 